Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen wa salatu wa salamu ala ashrafil anbiya'i wal mursaleen wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in wa na'udhu billahi min ash-shaytani rajim bismillahir rahmanir rahim Ashadu an la ilaha illallah wa ahdahu la shadika wa ashadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasooluhu Rabbi shrah li sadri wa yassir li amri wa ahlu luqtatan min lisani yafqahu qawli Subhanaka la ilma lana illa ma'allamtana innaka antal alimu hakim the concept of finding ease in difficulty. We're always faced with difficulties. But how we tackle those difficulties depends on how we view those difficulties. And the standardized perception of a difficulty is that it's something that cannot be done. Something difficult, so it cannot be done. Contrary, however, the concept of a difficulty and the concept of ease are essentially one and the same. They are both part and parcel of the same. Just that the difficulty is just a magnitude or more than the ease. The action still has to be performed. The deed still needs to be done. It can be done with ease when it is easy or it becomes a difficult task to perform. And Regardless of your outlook towards it, regardless of what circumstance comes about, regardless of what issue you might be facing, the ease in performing that task will depend on how strong you are yourself, intellectually and spiritually, where your mind is intellectually strong and your heart is spiritually strong. These two will determine how you will perform that task and with what ease you will be able to perform it. Irrespective, when the circumstances happen, they will happen in the way they have been ordained to happen. It is not unto you to decide whether or not it's an easy task for you to perform or it's a difficult task for you to perform. And when you look at Islam and your, and your purpose of fulfilling your Islam, there are some tasks that are easy and there are some tasks that are difficult. And then there are times when those easy tasks tend to be difficult and there are also times when those difficult tasks tend to be easy. So the circumstances will always change, but the action still has to be performed. The problem arises is when encountering a difficulty, the person tends to feel a certain loss, tends to feel like there is an immense burden on that individual. That why is this becoming so difficult for me to handle anymore. The beauty of the Quran is that when it introduces a concept, it not only defines what that concept is, but in itself the Quran explains how you should understand that concept. It explains itself and it depends on how that concept is introduced. There is a certain tone and an emotion that Allah uses in different contexts when relating to the specific concept that is being introduced. And it's interesting that when it comes to explaining what ease and difficulty is and what role it plays in the human being's perception of reality, Allah uses a very soft, kind and comforting approach almost a friendly approach because Allah as the creator understands what he has created and how much this creation can endure. He does not put a task that is too difficult to perform in that he encourages the individual to strengthen himself, to push his endurance so that he can succeed in it. There is one surah, there are two surahs in the Quran that really put into perspective what ease and difficulty entail in an individual's life. And this was primarily, it was contextual with the Prophet wasallam because he went, through, he went through incredible dynamic shifts in his life where he had immense ease in his tasks and he also encountered immense difficulties in his tasks. In those difficult times is where the comfort came in. 
and it enabled the prophet to see through his tasks. But as a prophet, those statements were not only contextual to him because he is a prophet and he is a conduit. He receives that revelation, that knowledge, and then he transmits it forth. So what applies to him subsequently applies to us. If we can see the wisdom that he saw, then the task becomes easy. The two surahs primarily that I'm going to highlight here are Surah Al-Duha and Surah Al-Inshirah. Now, Abdullah ibn Masood used to recite both these surahs together as a continuum, as a single continuum. And uh, Ibn Abbas also said that the first ayah of Surah Inshirah is a continuum of Surah Al-Duha. What's also interesting is that someone like Qari Abdul Basit used, would recite both the surahs as a single continuum and he would bridge the two together. It's, it's a very, it's a phenomenal way, the way he recites it, where he gives certain elongations and certain tones and pitches to certain words that really bring out the true meaning of the ayat. Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, beginning with Surah Al-Duha, he starts off by swearing. He takes an oath. And when Allah takes an oath, it is a monumental oath. It cannot be shaken. And He takes an oath with things that He has created and they are absolute in their true nature. They do not change. Which signifies the importance of the oath He is taking. وَالدُّهَا وَاللَّيْلِ إِذَا سَجَى By the morning brightness or the before noon, the midway period when the, when the day is brightest. That's a concept that will never change. وَاللَّيْلِ إِذَا سَجَى And the night that covers, because the night will always cover. So the oath he is taking is absolute. مَا وَدَّعَكَ رَبُّكَ وَمَا قَلَى Your Lord has not forsaken you. He has not abandoned you. So don't feel the despair right now. Don't feel like the world has crumbled around you. He is still with you. Because he is explaining to you that this difficulty you are going through is going to shape you and groom you and build you for something else, for a much bigger purpose. وَلَلْآخِرَةُ خَيْرٌ لَكَ مِنَ الْأُولَى That that purpose, that destination is better than this. So endure it here because you will not have to endure it there. وَلَسَوْفَ يُعْتِكَ رَبُّكَ فَتَرْضَى He will give you if you feel like you have been deprived right now, if you feel like you do not have the capabilities of pulling through, He will support you, He will give you, and you will be satisfied. Whatever it is that you are lacking, He will fulfill it. He's taking an oath. Right? And He's explaining, Alam yajidka yatiman fa'awa. Did He not find you an orphan and gave you refuge? Did he not find you at your lowest and brought you up? And he found you, you were lost and he guided you. He showed you the way. We tend to think that when Allah opens the doors, it's a physical door that will open. It's a solution that stares you right in the face. It tells you exactly what you need to do. What we seldom do not understand is that we somehow find a way to overcome those difficulties. We don't realize that it is guidance from Him. It's Hidayah He has placed in your heart. That you found that solution was not because you were smart and intelligent and genius. It was because He showed you the way. And He found you in a position where you had nothing. You were poor. And He gave you. So when you reflect back on your life, and you look at where you were and where you have come from and how you got here. This might seem like those were better days. And it will always seem like the grass is greener as you move ahead. So you keep pursuing a certain route thinking that it will resolve your problems. Your problems may have increased in magnitude. But your status has also increased equally. With great power comes great responsibility. When you are promoted, 
You're not just promoted with wealth and with reward. You're promoted with responsibility. So where you were, you had nothing. You were literally nothing. You were non-existent. He brought you into existence. He has brought you so far in your existence. Without his help, you would not have survived. He's telling you, look back at where you were and understand the reality you are in. I am not testing you just for the sake of it, for the fun of it. I'm testing you because I want to strengthen you. And in response, then he's saying, فَأَمَّ الْيَتِيمَ فَلَا تَقْحَرْ So when you see someone who was in the same situation that you were before, as for the orphan, do not oppress him. You were in the same position before. Understand where you came from. They are there right now. وَأَمَّ السَّائِلَ فَلَا تَقْحَرْ فَلَا تَنْحَرْ and for he who asks of you, don't turn him away. And it's not just material asking. It's even asking for knowledge. It's even asking for your presence. It's even asking for your companionship. Because there was a time you didn't have. He gave you. He has sent another servant of his to ask from you. Don't turn him away. وَأَمَّا بِنِعْمَةِ رَبِّكَ And as for this favor, this grace from your Lord. فَحَدِّثْ Tell others, strengthen others, tell them that your Lord has not forsaken you. The continuum of this ayah, the way Qari Abdul Basid recites is, وَأَمَّا بِنِعْمَةِ رَبِّكَ فَحَدِّثْ لَا إِلَهَا إِلَّا اللَّهُ أَوَّاهُ أَكْبَرُ وَلِلَّهِ الْحَمْدُ بِسْمِ اللَّهِ الرَّحْمَنِ الرَّحِيمُ أَلَمْ نَشْرَحْ لَكَ صَدْرُكَ Did we not expand your breast? And the breast is, 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 the, is the sadr. It is that which contains your heart. It's that which contains your mind. It is the hub whence you receive that knowledge, that guidance, that intuition from Allah. So he's expanding you is to enable you to receive more. And the expansion increases you in spiritual strength. وَعَوَضُعَنَا أَنْكَ وِزْرَكَ and he removed your burden. Alladhi anqadha dhahrak. That which was weighing you down on your back. Warafa'na laka dhikrak. And he raised you to a level of maqam, to a level of certain esteem. Fa'inna ma'al usri yusra. Indeed, every difficulty there is ease. And he repeats it. Because these two concepts are. You cannot picture ease and difficulty in the same statement. How is it that a task can be difficult but easy at the same time? Or how can it be easy and difficult at the same time? Because they are intermarried concepts. Just like joy and sorrow, they are intertwined. That if the task is difficult, there is ease in it. You need to seek it. And you can't seek it from visual perception. You need to seek it with Basira. This is why he's saying we expanded your chest so that you realize, you understand where your sustenance will come from. How are you going to deal with this issue? He does not bring difficulty in your pathway or give you circumstances or issues or problems so that you can solve them. That's just the repercussion of it. That's just the action of it. He's giving you those problems so that you can turn to him for guidance. It's not for you to just deal with it. It's for you to turn to Him to help you deal with it. And the expansion of the Sadr is so that you can allow His light, His Noor, His guidance to come in. When He gives you that knowledge of how you're going to resolve your problems. And that's why He repeats that statement. Inna ma'alu suri yusra. There's no doubt about it. Allah does not waste words. When he repeats something, it's very, very, very grave and very weighty. There are times in the Quran he uses so few words when an elaboration is required, but he doesn't. And there are times when he repeats something as simple as this, but it's complex in and of itself. Indeed, there is ease in difficulty. فَإِذَا فَرَغْتَ فَنْصَبْ and so when you are freed of your problems, when you've resolved your issues, stand up. 
Stand in prayer. Stand with your head held high. Not in pride, but in humility, in understanding that He has helped you. وَإِلَىٰ رَبِّكَ فَرْغَبْ And then turn to Him with that emotion. In thanks, in submission. So don't let your difficulties bog you down. It's a weight. It holds on to you. But there is a solution. There is always a solution. Rather than trying to fix it yourself, turn to Him for guidance. Because the moment you submit your entirety to His will, like an infant child, then you've essentially given Him the problem to resolve it for you. It's no longer on your back. And you'll find a way out. Whatever it is that you're dealing with, whatever fitna, whatever trial, whatever issue, whatever tribulation, surrender yourself to Him and He will give you the solution. If you don't surrender it, He will leave you to fix it yourself. He will leave you to sort it out yourself. And how much are you going to sort out? How much further are you going to go? That's the question at the end of the day. وَآخِرُ الدَّعْوَانَا أَنِ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ رَبَّنَا تَقَبَّلْ مِنَّا إِنَّا كَانْتَ السَّمِيُّ الْعَلِيمُ وَتُبْ عَلَيْنَا يَا مَوْلَانَا إِنَّا كَانْتَ التَّوَابُ الرَّحِيمُ بِرَحْمَتِكَ يَا أَرْحَمَ الرَّاحِمِينَ بَارَكَ اللَّهُ فِيكُمْ وَالسَّلَامُ عَلَيْكُمْ وَرَحْمَةُ اللَّهِ